I feel like I have been hopping between gaming distribution a lot lately. Wondering how this one will be like. Regarding OS, let's go. Hello everyone, my name is Hugo, a Linux user who dares to have a girlfriend. I make videos trying to make people fall in love with Linux because your Linux experience shouldn't be good, it should be great. Let's start by looking at the distribution website. Right off the bat, we can see that it is advertised as an easy to use all-in-one distribution. It claims all the software can be found and installed using its app store. It is no hustle to set up for the hybrid GPU laptops, especially for the AMD and Nvidia combination ones. We'll see about that with this laptop soon enough. Also, if you're wondering which distribution Regatta OS is built upon, it is based on the OpenSUSE. It's interesting the website didn't put it in a more obvious location, so just an FYI here. As always, I had to check the NVIDIA driver question on their FAQ page, and it seems that they have a dedicated ISO file for that just like Pop! OS. The issue here is after clicking on the download button, I can't seem to find it anywhere. Both of the websites are giving me the different language version instead of the NVIDIA or Intel AMD separately. That's a bummer. Well, I was not too worried about it because I once got the Intel version Pop! OS and found a way to install NVIDIA drivers in the end anyway. Let's see if I can find a solution to that on Regatta 2. I already boot up the installer system with the USB, but I haven't seen anywhere mentioning a video driver yet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install the whole system and see how long it will take me. The time right now is 91.05. Let's start. There was an immediate issue with the installer. When I selected the option to format the whole disk to install the system, the installer couldn't format the partition which Nobata was on. I tried using the KDE partition manager and the Yast partitioner. None of them worked. Reboot didn't help either. Thank goodness I have other distributions on my Ventura at the time. I was able to solve this issue by using Linux Mint installer. I think the partitioning issue is fixed. Let me try installing the system again. And the time right now is 21.29. Let's see how long does it take this time. Let's look at the installation process itself. It is straightforward. It will start right after the partitioning, but the first time reboot will not go straight into the system. Some initial setup is required. All right, the first time boot up is done and the time is 21.35. It took me six minutes for the whole installation process. Now it seems there is some steps to set up the user and the system. I wonder if it is designed to make it similar to the Windows setup process. But the difference here is that after the initial setup, Regatta OS needs to reboot again while Windows does not. Looks like it's freezing now, but I'm not sure if I should force it to restart. I'll try that. After forcing the system to reboot, I was able to see the system. Well, it seems the system is up and running successfully. And the time right now is 21.39. It took me 10 minutes exactly to do the whole installation. It is logged in automatically with the correct user I set up and the system seems to be working fine. But Nvidia is still nowhere to be found. I checked the HW info and MaxQ application built in with the system but can't find any clue that Nvidia is installed. I remember Nobata was able to fix it by using a welcome page. So I did a search in the menu bar but sadly it's not there. No worries, I will use the same trick I did on Nobata. Try finding it in the software store. I was not surprised to see the driver showed up in the search result, but interestingly, there is nowhere mentioning whether it is the proprietary driver from Nvidia or it is the open source one. With my recent experience on Nobata, I do know that 515 is actually from Nvidia. I assume that the creators made it this way to minimize the confusion to users who are coming from Windows, but I think it wouldn't hurt to mention it for the experienced Linux users who are also interested in it and wanted to try it out. Next, let me rant about the App Store itself. First, it sometimes does not show the progress of the software which is being installed. This happened the very first time when I installed a Nvidia driver. 
There was no way to tell if it was finished. I ended up closing the app store and reopened it to find the installation was done, but had no idea if it was actually finished successfully without interruption because the system froze for the second time when I rebooted after installing the driver. And after I forced it to restart again, I found the GPU icon in the system tray was gone. I reinstalled the driver after that, and this time the progress bar show up. Which brings me to my second point. When I read their website saying the App Store itself will be able to handle everything people need, I had a hunch that you will hide all the logs on its UI. But I didn't think it would be like this. Because when I expand the progress bar, the detail is saying the same information as the title. What is the point? And finally, I did encounter a situation next day when the application failed to install. It just had a pop-up saying the issue was reported to the developer. There was no error code. Even Windows have error code. How could I search Google for a solution if I don't know what is going wrong? I know, not a lot of people can debug the system themselves, but at least they can use the error message to get a sense of why they can't use certain app. And better yet, they may be able to find the open tickets on GitHub to know when a certain issue will be fixed. This is the longest script I have ever written for any distribution other than Gen2 before installing anything other than the NVIDIA driver. And I have already forced the system to shut down by holding the power button twice. Next, I went ahead to install Steam, OBS, Handbrake, DaVinci Resolve, and GIMP. You can see here, when there are several items in the installation queue, the progress bar starts to have an issue again. I had to wait a long time after the handbrake was finished before GIMP started. After all the installation was done, I opened up the GIMP and closed it just to test it. And boom, the system froze again. This time, I could move the mouse, but clicking or typing on keyboard do not work. It was too late for me to do anything productive. So I forced it to shut down for the third time and call it a day. It is a new day. After I forced the system to shut down for the third time, I decided to reinstall the whole system and see if I can get a better experience this time. The second time the installation was quite smooth. Nothing happened during the partitioning and the system was rebooting to the user creation screen after that. The issue this time happened at the user creation section. You see, I already created the user and talked to the camera wanting to see if the system will freeze again, but it rebooted back to the user creation page. After this happened twice, I was able to figure it out on the third time. Good job again for no logging. After getting into the system, I was able to install NVIDIA driver 515 again. Thankfully, the progress bar showed up this time. I waited patiently for it to finish. While I was waiting, I was thinking, if the system would not boot up for the first time when the users were set up without the auto login feature, is it okay to remove it now after the system is already up and running? So I turned it off, and it turned out the system was able to boot up properly without the auto login after a video driver installation. It looks like the system is working properly this time after installing the NVIDIA and the system update. It's gaming time now. Finally, let's install some games. This time, I will start with the Assassin's Creed Origins because I saw there is an application called Regatta Game Access which contains Ubisoft Connect. So I want to see if that will work out of the box. Let's begin. This is where all the nightmares started. First, the process of the game installation is very similar to what it is on Lutris. Install Ubisoft Connect, then Steam installation will pop up. But Steam will not show up after the installation, which is the first issue. I'm not sure why this happened because just like the software store, the distribution hides all the logins, so I have no idea what's going on. Well, I assume it might be due to the NVIDIA driver as there is only one black box showing up as the Steam. So I downgraded the driver to version 470, Progress. I can see the NVIDIA icon showing up in the status bar after reboot. Oh, that is why it disappeared the day before. But sadly, Steam is still not showing up when launching it through Ubisoft Connect, which is the first 
dead end. Next, I decided to go with the solution I learned from Cloris Agro on Nobara. Using Proton Up Qt to set up Proton GE, I removed Ubisoft from the Regatta OS game access, but I can't install Steam back from the App Store anymore. This is where I see the useless message saying the issue was reported to the developers. After several reboots, I made the install by pure luck. Then the application would not start properly. After several more reboots and process killing and more luck, I can log in. I was able to install the whole game after enabling Proton Experimental version and see the age old Uplay is not found error. And I do know that the GE version Proton probably cannot fix this issue because on Nobara, Uplay was launching with the Proton Experimental before I switched over to the Proton GE. But I want to give it a shot anyway. So I installed Proton Up Qt next, swapped the game over. Like I thought, same error which is the second dead end. Let's try Proton Tricks, the solution I found when using the pure OpenSUSE to play this game. It has to work, right? Issue with this is that Proton Tricks is not available in the App Store. No worries, given this is based on OpenSUSE, I open up the terminal and install it through Zapper command. However, when I open it up, it gives the error saying the wine version was too low. I inspected the wine using Zapper and found out it was not installed. So I replaced the pre-installed wine GCS applications with the pure wine version 7. I also installed wine tricks to replace the wine tricks GCS. Still no. That is the third dead end. Finally, let's try using Lutris, which can also be found in the App Store. After uninstalling the game from Steam, I open up Lutris, install Ubisoft Connect, and launch it. But it just kept launching without going anywhere. I waited for an hour until I lost all my patience and decided that is the final thing I would ever do on this distribution. Originally, I was thinking about testing the DaVinci Resolve on this distribution. But after two times system installation and four times failures trying to play Assassin's Creed, I gave up. I'm sure there must be something I did wrong, and there will be someone out there who made it work easily using the same laptop. If that someone is you, let me know how you did it in the comment down below, because I am running out of ideas now. On the distribution advertised as everything should work with the GUI App Store, I ended up using the terminal to debug. I don't know what more can I do now. I remember I had better luck playing the same game on the pure open source in this video. Because I accomplished nothing with this distribution, here is another picture of a squirrel to cover up all the time you spend watching my video. I am logging off to install another distribution right now to blow off some steams. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.